can't celebrate spring without these beautiful blooms. Let me introduce you to magnolias. Plus, for 23 years, she's been creating gorgeous hats by hand. The secrets to designer Suzanne Newman's trade. Next on Martha. Welcome back. This year, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden is celebrating its 75th anniversary of Magnolia Plaza. This garden displays over 145 glorious magnolia trees in almost 50 different varieties. Here to tell us all about this beautiful collection is the garden's vice president of horticulture and science research, Patrick Kalina. So, so welcome great. back, Thank Patrick. You. It's really great to have you here. Um, um, this collection started 75 years ago. Right, it started more as a landscape design, this formal landscape with the very early magnolias, the right. saucers and the star magnolias, and it's really evolved into something much bigger over time. So that's the trees when they were small? Very small. Oh, yeah, boy. that would have been in the, t in the 1920s, maybe. Oh, incredible. And uh, now it's become this annual rite of spring where we'll, folks will come out and you'll see just sprays of, of oh my magnolia gosh. flowers. Well, all the magnolias that you grow there um, are um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, they bloom over a period of, what, about a month? Yeah, at least. Sometimes a little longer, actually, because we'll we have southern yes. forms later on. Um, but really what we're focused on today are what are known as the Brooklynensis type. So in the 1950s... Brooklynensis. The, Brooklynensis is, uh, you know, a uh, posh name for, for Brooklyn, uh, for the hybrid. <laughs> the hybrid, uh, But yes. what we're looking at is really uh -huh. a cross between uh, the native cucumber magnolia, magnolia cuminata, yeah. and magnolia denudata, and that is really oh. the flag bearer. It was the second. It wasn't the first oh, uh, hybrid. So but this, this is Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah. Right. So, so that's it's a very pale yellow. Very common. Almost ivory. Yeah. Almost. And uh, I know you have ivory chalice, I think, in uh, your house. I have house several and, different yellow and varieties. And that's paler as well. And I think I do have a, a, an Elizabeth tree. Right. Now, um, that's not my tree. Oh, no, that's, that's right. That's the original Elizabeth. That is so beautiful. Now, was that hybridized here? That was hybridized in, in Brooklyn. Wow. And uh, Ava Maria Sperber uh, had a, a few. It was the second one selected and selected, I guess, in the late 1970s. Yeah, well, incredible. This is a lovely one and fast-growing. Very. Yes. And very vigorous. And you can see yes. from that image, it's a... Big, now, broad, upright Now, growing. why yellow magnolias? When did, they, when did they first appear? Well, they were breeding all different kinds of species, and, and they were the first to cross these North American and Asian species, particularly this Yulon magnolia and the cucumber. And uh, they discovered a, some real momentum behind the yellows, and it became the first yellows brought to market. And they do grow fast because uh, I've planted one area, just yellow magnolias, and they're still, you know, some are this right, tall, right. some are 10 feet tall, but uh, they are coming along. Well, the nice thing about these crosses, and we'll go through the list, is that they're really precocious bloomers so even yeah. if you only have a small mound they you'll do. have some magnificent right. flowers so this is Lois. so this is Lois this is a deeper yellow and this is a very is. floriferous very vigorous form mm. uh, it's a little later blooming uh, than Elizabeth I should say we've these are the end of the blooms they usually bloom before the leaves with Elizabeth so yeah. Lois are just going this. then oh. Hattie Carthen just this getting going now gorgeous some of the crosses some and then Brooklyn Ansys has been expanded to, to mean a whole range of hybrids this is sturdy, sturdy petals. Very much so. They're also they're fairly new, and you see the the tepals are, are oh, emerge yeah. green. Yeah. Uh, and it had this one has a little Lilliflora nigra in it, which gives it the purple. So as these yep, progress, on the outsides, right? You'll see them blush. Gorgeous. Uh, this one actually is our latest introduction. So we Deepest just named this. Gold. This is Judy Jeez. Zuck, who oh. you may have remembered as the, the our recent uh, president of Brooklyn oh, Botanic yeah. Garden. Very, very fond of magnolias. A deep golden flower with that plum working its way up through. Mm. And then we just wanted to show also uh, what these have inspired. So here are two pink selections. This one's Coral Lake, mm. which is David Leach. And this one Look is this Daybreak, one. which is Augie pink Kerr. Center. Right. Oh, and fragrant. fragrant. Oh. Try, try this one, because this one should be more. This oh. is more like cinnamon, usually. And oh, Daybreak, very. I think, is my favorite of the pink hybrids. It's an Augie oh. Kerr selection. But the, all of these and many others were inspired by this intermediate This uh, is crossing. so beautiful. What a gorgeous blossom. So they're all in bloom right now for all of us to yeah, go and see. Yeah, these right here are really cranking along, and there's still many more out there and many more to come. I love this. If you look at the back of this flower, look at the deep golden color. And you can see the bud, too, how purple yeah, that is. So beautiful. Well, when we come back, Patrick's going to show us how to graft magnolias. You won't believe the amazing results. We're back with Patrick Kalina, a fount of information from the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And now Patrick's going to show us how to graft a magnolia to create uh, these beautifully flowering specimens that he's just 
gone through that glossary. They're incredibly beautiful. Right, and you can actually produce these with a, with not without too much trouble. Uh, there's different kinds of grafting, I should point out. This is just called bud grafting. Right. Uh, where we're only using a single bud. So just the terminology is this is your understock. This tree is a Cobus magnolia, similar yeah. to a is star magnolia. This is the same. Right, same thing. Okay. And then this is called, this is budwood, all right? Or uh, the cyan is what is the part you put okay. onto the understock. And I should say, I, this was taught to me by my friend Richard Hesslein, who's a magnolia guru, and uh, so he, I'm sure he's okay. watching closely to make sure this is done properly. <laughs> uh, so these are seedling trees that you can get at seed tree nurseries. Exactly. Okay? And budwood you can get off the tree. Now you're focusing on, if you want to get close up of that, before, when this is still a leaf bud, before that becomes a wooden spur, that's what you want. You want okay. the latest, newest growth, which sort of looks like okay. a, a sturdy pencil. You want a good sharp knife. And you want to be careful because, you know, if you do this at home, you go to the medicine cabinet, you do this on TV, and it's a YouTube moment forever. Right. That's no good. Uh, so do we cut this tree off? No, we're just oh. going to remove a little oh. section of bark okay. with the bud. So the first okay. step is you're going to, about three, four inches above the, the soil, make a 45-degree incision just like that, okay? Oh, that just little. Just a little smile. Okay. You just so want to make sure you cut through the cambium. Okay, but not near a bud? No. Nope. Oh, just Just right because yeah, okay. we're going to make our own bud. Okay, okay, so you've got the little slice there. Yep. All right, so then above it, about two inches, you make a cut just like that. All the way down and take yeah. it off? See, just like that. So you end up with a little stripe. Okay. Okay. It's a little yep. wide at the bottom. I got mine okay. off. So then you pick out which, which magnolia you want to bud. Um, these okay. larger sticks are called Big Pink, and then you've got a Coral Lake there. You might want to try yeah, that. I think, I think I want Coral Lake. Okay. So what does the bud look like? We know that looks like this, right? Okay. So we're going to cut off... That's a bud, too? Right. Okay. It's a leaf bud, right? So we want to cut, essentially, the same two-inch span. Very simple again. You start behind, and this time you work your thumb through the knife, and you just slide underneath the bud, and you, it'll... You, if it's a young stem, it might crack a little on you, like that. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got mine off, like that. Right. That's close. Yeah. And you want a little 45 degree notch at the bottom. Oh, I, oh, I, oh I cut it off the tree. Okay, that's wrong. Right. Huh? So then the next step is that little slice you made, that first 45 degree angle right. serves as a pocket. Bud up. Okay. All right, you can use that as your little handle. You don't want to touch the back of it just in case there's anything on your hands. And okay. I should say, too, we've cleaned off the knives with alcohol before we start this. And you pop that guy into the slot like this. Let's just do that. Oh, I see. And you're so you're just putting it right on there. Oh, you're you're Making, kind make sure of oh, I 45 see degree doing. angle. See that? It just sort yeah. of sits in here. Okay. And then we're going to take this tape. Now this is called buddy tape. This is great stuff. Hmm. It started off as a medical tape. Just take off a little segment. And you're going to hold it over the top of the bud. All right? And then just with your finger and it's slowly just just with one end and to start to pull slowly on one side of it. Okay. See how it stretches out this yeah. way? Wow. And just wrap it around? Yeah. Mm. And with, with like this tape, tourniquet. you can go, yeah, you can go over the, the advantage of using buddy tape is that you can go over the top of the bud with it. All right. So go. And leave the bud sort of sticking out? Yep. Does See it that? breathe? It lets, it yeah, lets it actually, breathe. the tape breathes. So with this old oh, grafting okay. tape, you wouldn't, you'd have to go yeah. over and above. All right, so we're going to have to wrap that up. So it should look somewhere like that. See that little bud there? Definitely. A little mummy. So then what we're going to do in the spring, again, I should say we also do this usually in September and October. And uh, the following spring, you'll come out, your tree will be there, and there'll be a little bud at the bottom. And it'll look like this. You'll see it's calloused over. And then we'll take a knife and we'll pop this, these little guys out. Okay, oh, this, is, this is the sucker growth. We take that out. That's oh. the bud. Now, in a year, if you did a leaf bud, it looks like this. A flower bud looks like oh. this. But that same year, you it do that. It grew that much. And then we'll take a, what's called a grow straight. You can make one of these, all too, if you don't have uh -huh. one. And just put it in, and that'll direct the bud up. But in a couple of years, that fuses, that becomes a trunk. Oh, look how easy it is to make a tree. Mm -hmm. How great. Oh, and this is the Skyland. And this is Skyland oh. Festival. I thought you'd like that. This is called Skylands. That's the name of my house up in Maine, but actually it refers to the great uh, New Jersey Arboretum, right. the Skylands. Right. This is fantastic.
How beautiful. Well, uh, Patrick uh, says that the Brooklyn Botanic Garden is giving everyone in our audience a free pass to visit the garden. We'll be right back. I'm going to come out and have to go to a wedding. Be sure to pick up a copy of Good Things for a Healthy Home, which is currently on the newsstands. This beautiful digest, sponsored by Whirlpool, is dedicated to helping you and your entire family lead a healthier, more environmentally friendly lifestyle. Everyone on our studio audience is going home with a copy, so enjoy it. And don't forget, tune in tomorrow for a mouth-watering derby pie recipe. Derby next, oh, this Saturday, the derby.